Another example of using Gauss's law, we're going to find the electric field caused by an infinite sheet of charge. Uh, again, we're picking an infinite sheet um, because it actually simplifies the problem in the computations. There's a symmetry that anywhere I pick on the sheet, I have just as much sheet to the left and the right and the back and the front, if it's infinite. Um, and obviously true, there is no such thing as an infinite sheet of charge or of anything, but what is true is that if you are close to a finite sheet, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between that and the sheet that's actually infinite. Um, so this is a, one of those examples of thinking about a limiting case as uh, being a useful approximation. All right, so to apply Gauss's law, um, I'm going to specify that this is a infinite sheet of charge that has a uniform surface charge density. So the surface star charge density sigma is going to be the ratio of the total charge on the sheet to the total area. Both of those, Q and A, are both infinite, but their ratio will be finite. And then in applying Gauss's law, we need to pick a, a surface to apply it to. And I want to think about uh, a cylinder. So that's going to tell us what the charge enclosed is, is how much charge is in there. The cylinder is going to have one cap at the top, and it's going to have another cap at the bottom of the cylinder. So we go ahead and label those. So our closed surface is going to be made out of one end cap. It's going to be made out of a, the side the wall of the cylinder, and then the third surface is the other end cap on the opposite side. And we'll specify that this mathematical surface we're going to apply Gauss's law to. Um, it's going to have a length L and the circular end caps have a radius R. Now applying Gauss's law, we have the flux of the electric field through my Gaussian surface is going to equal all of the enclosed charge over the permittivity of free space. And we're going to go ahead and calculate both the flux of the electric field and how much charge is enclosed in that surface. So the flux of the electric field is going to have three parts, the flux through the top, the flux through the side, and then the flux through the bottom. So there are the flux through the bottom. Now the electric field lines, let's go ahead and trace one out. They're going to run perpendicular to the sheet. They'll begin on the positive sheet of charge and extend perpendicular away above and below. And since we picked an infinite plane of charge, there's no uh, reason that that electric field line can tilt to the left or the right or into the page, out of the page. It has to be exactly perpendicular to the sheet of charge. So with that, there can't be any flux through surface 2, the side of the Gaussian surface. Because there the electric field lines are going to be parallel to the surface, so none can pass 
into my Gaussian surface or out. So the flux of the electric field through the top is going to be the magnitude of the electric field at the top, it's going to be pointed out, times the area of the top, which is pi r squared. And then at the bottom, the electric field lines are pointed down. The normal to the surface of surface 3 is also pointed down, so they're parallel to each other. So that's going to give me magnitude of the electric field times pi r squared again. And I add those two together. It's going to be 2e times pi r squared. All right. We also need to know the charge enclosed to apply Gauss's law. So the charge enclosed is going to be the surface charge density times the area of that green circle. So it's going to be sigma times pi r squared. So now we have everything in Gauss's law. I uh, just set up our equation. 2 times the magnitude of the electric field times pi r squared is going to equal sigma pi r squared over the permittivity of free space epsilon. So the radius of my cylindrical surface is arbitrary, it's on both sides of the equation, so it cancels out, pi cancels out, just move the two to the other side, and for a, an infinite plane of charge, we have that the magnitude of the electric field is going to be sigma over two epsilon naught. And then in terms of direction, if it is a positive uniform sheet of charge, the electric field lines are going to point away from it. And if it's a negative sheet of charge, they will point in towards it. And this is the case uh, for the infinite uh, plane of charge. Do you get an electric field that is uniform, so it does not depend on distance away from the sheet?